So, Professor Bezeo, if you could bring us home here, and then we'll uh, progress the discussion. Thank you, and uh, I'm delighted to be here, and I want to thank Deborah for inviting me. I would not have been here because I think this is a, a class of people that since yesterday I've learned a lot. I think we need to have you more talk to us. Uh, but uh, as you realize since yesterday, I think our topic was covered yesterday, summarized very well in the reflections, and the, my colleagues have more or less said what I should have said. But nevertheless, I As Stuart said, one medicine is not new, it's not a new idea, it's not a new term, but I must first say I want to congratulate the veterinarians because it is more acceptable, more practiced by the veterinarians than the medics. Those medics who are here, you must agree with me that we are very, very arrogant. We think that we are, we are in our own world and it's only now that we are being hit that we are trying to, to get back. And uh, there, is a, there is a quote there that I really love, which was long ago. But what happens, or what happened when that was said, and when many, many people could understand? Nothing happened. People remained in their silos. And the silos became even stronger. The medics saw themselves as professionals and other people did not matter. So one health approach to us at OSHARE, OSHARE stands for One Health Central and East Africa. Now we have added on, as you later on, we have added on West Africa, has an integrated approach for promoting One Health. For us at, at the OSHARE, in our countries that I'm going to mention, we are looking at breaking those silos. The word silos has been used a lot in this meeting, but they continue to happen even when we live here. There are vital components, and I'll only mention one, which is, which is on the screen. Uh, th there are very big challenges when we talk about One Health. But One Health is faced by the new global challenges and can be overcome through collaboration among multiple professionals. Veterinary medicine, human medicine, environmental health, wildlife, nursing, and allied health professionals. Of recent, OSHARE has included the business schools, the social scientists, so we are no longer looking at the health professionals alone. We have included the others. I think this is a common slide that you, you may recall. You have seen these silos, and you always drive past them. Those si silos never talk to each other. None of them knows what is inside the other. And that's what our professionals have been. But we must break them. They must talk. OSHARE is essentially preparing future public health leaders, future leaders with a common vision. We started in 20, 2010 in East Africa, and we have 14 universities in six countries. And these countries, are, when I read them, you realize that we have a big variation. We have Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania, DRC, Ethiopia, Uganda. And now we have added Cameroon, and Senegal. You realize that doing one health in these countries, doing the same things is very, very difficult. We are at different levels of development. We speak different languages. We have different policies. We have common partners. Those are University of Minnesota and Tufts University, and that's how 
Deborah got to know, to know us. We've been working together. But we've done our best to say, can we go beyond the barriers? And those are the barriers that we are trying to break down. And I can assure you that we have actually broken them down. My, my colleague talked about language. Language is not English and the French, no. Language is talking the same things that matter, whether you say them in French, or you say them in English. So that's what we have done. And the, the next, uh, the, and, and you will see that the Southeast Asia group is trying to learn from us. But what have we done to break those silos? We work through regional and country networks. We have formed networks within countries, and those countries now are talking to each other. Uh, somebody talked about public. If you don't have the public in the center, the stakeholders, you are not going to achieve what we have been talking about, accreditation. People will say, oh, yes, that was a report. Oh, yes, those are standards set, but shall we follow them? Professor Sewan Kambo yesterday talked about bringing together stakeholders. We need to bring stakeholders to the center for us to accept and believe that what we are doing as accreditation, as training, as building future leaders, as professionals, then if we don't bring them, then we are not serving the, the people that we are mandated to serve. We want to strengthen government, uh, to strengthen graduate and undergraduate preparations. What have we done? We have now gone to all our curricula in these countries and said, what did our people teach us? What did Professor Sewan Kambo teach me that we can now change? We have revised all, all our curriculum. But to begin with, we looked at what are you teaching your people? It is very difficult to get somebody from another country and you say, where is your curriculum? There was resistance. But we were able to break them, and we looked at all of them and say, you are weak here, you are, you are strong here. How do we standardize this curriculum? Now we have added the One Health model, which has been accepted across the board. We've done that in these countries, and we're going to do it in West Africa, where we have admitted the two countries. You may, you may see it very difficult, and it was very difficult, but we have been able to achieve this. And the next thing is we have had to bring governments to talk to each other, to accept that this is the way to go. The accreditation bodies in these countries we are having them talk so that they don't look at their own standards and they, they say, this is Uganda standard. No, we are saying this is the standard that we need across the, the, the countries. We, we have helped. Uh, we, we are looking at exploring opportunities for multidisciplinary accreditation so that it's not accreditation just for one profession. We, you, you'll be surprised. We have nurses. We have Everybody, when we are training, we have moved away from training and say that these are only medics. We are training everybody together. They are core things they must know. So that when you go to a graduate, a master's graduate, an undergraduate, he talked about postgraduates. We are doing it right from undergraduate. So we, uh, as, as I try to, to finish, what did we say that the requisites for accreditation would be? And that's what we are looking at, and many more, but I, I summarized them. Common training principles. If we find DRC does not have somebody with a certain specialty, because we have done a, a database, we have those who can teach what? We send them there through this project. We get experts from Tufts and the UMN, and they go and teach these, so that we all have the common teaching. Agreed skills and competencies. People keep talking about skills and competencies. What are they? And those are the ones we are giving to, to, the, to the students. And we have recognition of fellow disciplines. If a nurse is in the class, if a social scientist is in the class, a vet, they are all equal. We recognize the disciplines. Recognized by policymakers and the employers and governments. We have tried to look at the employers, bring them together, meet them in, in DRC, meet them in, in Rwanda, and say, this is the class we are producing. Will you have them and employ them? 
professional standardization, I've talked about it, and the Stuart talked about career paths. And unless these one health trained professionals know their career path, then you are wasting your time. And that's what we are trying to do. You become a surgeon, but you know how to handle something when it comes to it. You, you realize that when there was a board in West Africa, our one health team was there and did a great job. And then we have cross-border recognition. Uh, those are some of the supportive multidisciplinary training that we have put in place. One, uh, one or two that is missing on that includes leadership, communication, and somebody talked about listening. I think we do a lot of listening and talking. Uh, opportunities, are, they are there. We, are, we have great opportunities because we have the knowledge of the diseases, epidemiology, as he said. Experience with diagnosing and managing diseases in large populations. This has been done across Europe and across Africa. These are advantages we should take of. We have both, we have eliminated some diseases and we have access to local and national regulatory systems. I, I must quickly say that the regulators, the accreditors have been part of us. They are part of us. They study with us or we train them. What is it that is difficult that we cannot talk to them and talk to the public and the other stakeholders and do one common thing? Challenges are historical, professional protection, government policies being different, different countries wanting different things, as he said, different universities being proud. I want to be number one, I want to be number two. I, I don't want to share this. Different university curriculum, policies and employers and industries saying we want this standard. We can only tell the employers what is the standard and what should they take. International requirements, if we put it across Africa and Europe and Asia, everybody will, will, will accept it. And the level of development, I think that's my last slide. And I say that this is achievable. We can run one health, one health approach, one health training, and have acceptable accreditation. Thank you very much.